Hi everyone, today we're gonna to be riding my new horse Etro for the first time. I've just come back from Africa. He's had about two weeks to kind of get used to and acclimatize to our stables. Um, he's been really, really good. I missed him so much while I was traveling. Um, oh yeah, yes, he's behind the camera also. Um, but yeah, it was really difficult kind of buying a new horse and being all excited and only a couple of days after him arriving, I, I had to leave. So it was kind of good actually because he, he had a lot of time here just to adjust, acclimatize. He's very settled. Um, and today we're going to be having the very first ride. So this is, well, you've seen him, but this is him. <laughs> this is Etro. He's in his full kind of swing and routine here. He's going into the walker twice a day. He's going into the field every day. He's on his full food. Um, everything's going really, really good. And I already had the saddle fitter come out before I left and to have a look at his back because I needed to get a new Kingsley saddle. I ended up going for the D4, the new D4, which I'm really, really excited about because I have the old D4 on Emporio. So I'm curious to see how that kind of fits and how that goes. But I got a really nice comment from the saddle fitter. When he saw him, he was like, oh, he's got such a nice back and he's got really good muscle development. So it should be quite easy to fit the saddle. So usually what you do when you get a new saddle is you have it on the horse for a two weeks and then everything starts to kind of squish down. Padding inside needs two weeks to compress. Once it's compressed, the saddle fitter needs to come back again to have a look that everything is okay because that can sometimes change things. So I'm just gonna ride him in uh, the D4 how I have it now and in two weeks we're gonna get it reviewed again. I have had the dentist also come out to see his mouth. I always like to do kind of like a full check. There was a little bit of work to be done on the mouth, but that's been handled, which is also good that he had the rest time. And I also got a physio to come out to have a look at his body, and she said everything's pretty good. The neck's a little bit stuck. He, she, he, he had a big release over the wither. Um, so that's kind of something for me to keep in mind in my, in my riding, especially today. I finally get to like put all the stuff on him that I've been he collecting brushed, and, and saving. Way. Yeah, yeah, he's brushed. I didn't want to put you guys through that. So he's brushed, I've done his hair. Um, I'm just gonna pop this on. I don't use any under pads right now. Um, I'm just using, I'm just putting the saddle straight on. So we're gonna chuck the saddle on. My D4 saddle, I've got my Equiline stirrups on. Those, have, those are like my all time favorite stirrups I've ever owned out of out of all of the ones that I've ever tried, and I've tried a lot now. I've tried the magnetic ones, I've tried Lemure, I've tried the Springer ones, I've tried everything. Um, but these are definitely my favorite. <gasps> oh my God. How strange to already see him with the, with the saddle on. Look at his eyes, look at them. He's super chill, that's something that we noticed straight away. But what I have also noticed is that he's a really sensitive horse. So I think, you know, the place you guys saw, so we went to where he was bred and then the next stable. So he's only lived in those two kind of stables his whole life. So I think he hasn't been exposed to that many things. He's never properly been in a fully covered indoor like where I'm about to take him today. Um, he hasn't, you know, seen all the machines we use here. Everything is quite new. So I have found him to be also quite sensitive. Um, and we were talking about this also. Yes and I always talk about this. Sometimes when you buy certain types of horses, they're blocked. Like they are very like, you can't get through to the actual horse because the horse is so used to a certain life that it had and it kind of shuts down and it puts these blocks up. It's part of like them not going out in the field, them not having maybe super close interactions with people, stuff like that, they get this block. Yes, I see that a lot. Maybe you can explain it better because you see this block a lot through your trip training. <clears throat> well, it's a lot when horses are a bit blocked that they are, you see it first of all in the eyes. The eye is a bit like, you can't really see the soul and then they just need to be able to open up because sometimes they just block themselves to protect themselves and they may be a bit afraid to make mistakes. Yeah. So and when, once they are more open and they like want to think with you and I think then you see the real horse and then they also can show the fun things and the naughty things and everything. Yeah, so we're kind of waiting for that more playful side to but open up with him. That will take some time. It will take time and it'll take also encouragement from us to allow him to want to do it. Too. I think that's almost everything. Yeah. To allow him to be able to do it. Um, so this is the bridle I'm going to be riding him in. I wanted to keep things super simple so I just have kind of a flash. Um, and a very simple bit, this is the KK Ultra from Springer. 
Um, it's got two clean? joints. It's pretty clean. It was from Emporio, so he's inherited it from his brother. Um, wow. But yeah, so I'm excited also to see him bridled up in a nice black bridle with a nice patent shine. But you can see how warm it is. 21 degrees, but look, he's completely sweating from the just having the halter on. This is, this is how it is in the Netherlands. It's just the humidity that gets you. For me, it's also kind of about setting myself up for success. So I know, I know with him that he hasn't properly seen an Indo with mirrors and stuff. So what I've done is I already went a few times into the Indo, just hand walking him, kind of getting him used to the mirrors, getting him used to the environment. That way it's not all happening at once. I, can kind, of, I kind of gradually brought the process together because he was a little bit scared of like the little poo. Um, Buckets we have in there and the scoops, he was like really not sure. So I let him like have a good look at everything. I'm sure today he'll still be looking. Um, but it was good to first kind of experience that on the ground. That way I also retain some information that, okay, when I go into the indoor, that might be something to look out for. Wow. Then now into the arena. Good boy. It's finally time. <laughs> So the game plan for today is just to keep it simple. I, I don't want to try and fix all the problems I'm feeling. I don't want to try and make him look as spectacular as possible. I want to try and make sure we have clear lines of communication so he's kind of understanding the basics. So for instance, I'm going to be asking in my way to, to go, to stop. I might do a tiny little bit of moving sideways in the walk. Um, and I'm going to tell you guys also something about the canter because how they ask right. for the canter in Spain is different than how we ask it. So I'm kind of going to show you how I have to adapt my um, aids oh. in order for him to understand. Ready? Mm. Okay, one, two, three. So I'm ready to get on my first ride. First time I'm even seeing it. I've given him two nicknames. One is Winnie the Pooh because his personality is very much like the Winnie the Pooh character. Um, the, and the second nickname is my Hanoverian pony because he looks like a little German. Hanoverian warm blood. Hanoverian? Hmm? A what? Hanoverian warm blood. Oh, Hanoverian. Good boy. Okay, saddle feels God, good. I'm sweating. Hmm? I'm sweating. Yeah, me too. Okay, what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna ask him to walk on. Okay, now the drums can come in. <laughs> and do you want the uh, door open in the back? And this is by no means like, um, me telling you guys what to do. This is just me sharing what I'm doing right now so you guys can understand. But you look good together. Thanks. Can we take a second? I've never seen it in real. Yeah, take it in. Wait, let me. Okay, I can't see myself properly yet in the mirror. But what I'm gonna ask first is I'm gonna cover those basic things because the first thing I felt, and you guys will remember it if you saw the other videos, is the first thing I felt with him was that he was blocked in the neck. So the right rein was fully blocked. I had no right rein. I could pull on it all I wanted. There was nothing. So the neck could only be square. So what I kind of want to start him to encourage with him and he'll want to move his body first, but I want him to just start to think of bending the neck um, without moving the body. So we're just going to ask him to start to think of only the neck because I'm going to be asking these things when I'm riding now. I'm going to be asking for the flexion and if I started to ask these things already when I was in trot or in walk, the whole body would move. But now I'm already kind of solidifying what I want to have there. So I'm not asking, it's not about, so this side is more difficult, which is interesting to me because it's the right rein that is stuck, but the left, the left side of the neck that is more difficult to bend. It's not about getting the like head down or trying to get him to collect. This has nothing to do with that. This is about him bending the neck left or right and I'm not asking either up or down I'm just asking for neck movement good so that feels pretty good for now I have a feeling that the time off he had will also help with the uh, with this problem Cute. what is he doing with his mouth oh yeah he's got this little like thing he does <laughs> which I'm quite curious about understanding what it is because I think it could be a couple of things so I know some horses that do it he kind of just smacks his lips like this. Now this could be just a little kind of tick he has, which I think is kind of cute. I also have a lot of ticks. So. It could be that it's actually stress induced because he appears very calm on the outside, but as I told you guys, he's quite a sensitive horse on the inside. Um, so it could be that he's actually feeling a little bit stressed um, or maybe he's a bit apprehensive about what's happening. So I'm thinking it's one of those two things or it could be that the jaw is a bit locked and uh, the flexion is locked, so he's just kind of dealing with that in this way. 
But I, I'll, I'll find out a little bit more about it. Oh, oh, there's just a piece of wood here. <laughs> he sees it. He can be a nice police horse, the way he looks. A police horse? This is a powerhouse dressage horse. What do you mean? Oh, but he looked so impressive when he did that. Hi. I can feel that he's already a little bit locked in this ring because you can see I'm putting pressure, but the neck is not bending. So what I'm just gonna do on the circle now, because this is the first ride, I don't wanna, I don't wanna do too, too much. I'm just gonna start to play with the flexion in a vibration. And I don't, I don't really care if the neck and the head goes behind the vertical, this rein is loose. I'm only asking for the bend. So I don't, doesn't matter what the head's doing in terms of like behind the vertical, too deep, that's kind of where he's going right now, but you can't fix it all at once. There you go, good boy. So I'm just gonna kind of go from outside flexion like this just asking him there with the neck good boy and then I'm gonna hold him there once he's once he gives and let him stay there and then I'm going to turn the head to the inside oh <laughs> so you see the whole body's a little bit stuck because he's already tripping over his feet so you can see he's not very flexible right now so we're just gonna ask a little bit on the inside and when, if he finds it really difficult, I'm gonna use my inside leg to move him away laterally. It'll make it easier for him to bend the neck. So inside to outside. See the outside here is much easier. And then back to the inside. Good boy. And what I'm kind of looking to do is, you can see it's already happening now a little bit. I want the neck to soften. I don't want the neck to be like super square. I just want the neck to be nice and soft. Good boy. We go the other. You look like someone who's looking to either make a website or um, run your website on a better platform, then Squarespace is where you need to be. Squarespace offers hundreds of already made templates where you can go in, uh, pick your favorite one, still customize everything you want. You don't need to have any coding knowledge. It's super user friendly. I run my shop on there. I've been running my website on Squarespace for almost four years now. Um, I truly, truly love the user experience. It's so easy to use on the go as well. You can make quick changes on your phone, whether it's updating stock levels, changing text, or uh, changing the photos as well. If this sounds like what you're looking for, then do use my link, which is www.squarespace.com slash madharniki. In doing so, you'll receive 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. So I've picked up a whip, and that's because there's gonna be some extra communication needed because I want to try and engage the hind end here. Now I know he reacts pretty good to the whip. You can see I'm tapping him. Well, I mean, not pretty good. He's pretty dead to the whip because I'm tapping him now and nothing's happening. But what I'm gonna use the whip for is the tempo I'm gonna be um, using is gonna be quite low, um, but I just need the whip to create a little bit of connection from the back to the mouth um, because I am gonna be um, slowing the tempo down. I need the hind end to stay quick to keep the connection. So I don't wanna have a big trot. I just wanna have a connected horse because that's gonna mean I'm gonna have more control and more balance. So we're gonna ask for the trot. Good boy, I'm excited. It's so exciting because, good boy. It's so exciting because I was thinking so much about this trot when I was uh, in Africa. So you can see, so he's really happy if you like just keep him square like this and just kind of with his head not changing inflection. But what we're gonna ask for now is a little bit of what we just did um, in the walk. So I'm just gonna ask for that inside flexion. There we go. And I'm just gonna soften and take every opportunity to be soft when he gives into the pressure. There we go. Good boy. Nice, so see how the tempo is really low. So I'm just gonna Ask him to just stay with me, good. It doesn't matter what the head is doing, it doesn't matter if it's too deep or too high, that's not what we're focusing on, we're just focusing on the body. So with my hands, I'm not asking him to stay super round, this is not doing anything, I'm asking only for the flexion. I just wanted to say he looks very light. Like, I'm keeping it super simple, we're not making the trot. He's trying really hard. We're not making the trot big, but it's super soft. Like look, if I go into sit trot, it's so easy to sit. Now, I should be able to just let him sit there nicely. Good boy. 
And you can see he's starting to take that banana shape around the corners, which uh, that's really what I'm looking Crossons. for because, yeah, do you see that? Because there was no bend when I rode him uh, in Spain. And that makes it really difficult for a corner because if you don't have any bend, then you're going around the corner like a square. Good boy. Very nice. Now he is hanging on this rein still. You can see that if I let go, he really wants to find it again to hang on it. So I'm just gonna keep doing that outside flexion. Nice. Very good. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but this feels really good to me. Looks good. Simple and straightforward. We're not asking too much. Easy. The tempo we're still, as I told you guys, I experienced this in Spain. As soon as I let go of the contact in Spain, the tempo would change, the horse would wriggle. So he's not really holding his own or listening to the legs too much, and that's okay. So I am having to help quite a bit. Easy. But I'm taking all the opportunities I can to let go and just let him sit in that kind of happy place. Do I look big on him? No. It's funny when Emporio revived the first he is time, quite he a, was quite huge. He's not a big horse, I mean, guys. It's like 166, big, 167. It was a lot so. better now. Like, it's crazy how that has changed. Then I'm going to have to correct it because he's going to want to swing in. I'm going to let go. Engine. Yeah. Good boy. Good boy. So that's what I'm going to do with the trot. And I'm pretty much happy with the trot. So I think I'm going to move on to the canter and have a feel. Now, I was telling you guys that I was going to explain how they do it differently. In some parts of Spain, a lot of the riders will ask for the canter with the inside leg. So, if, for instance, if now if I wanted to go into canter, they would ask like this, without the outside. But did you get told or did you figure out? Both. I, I figured it out and then I asked because I was like, what's going on? And they said, yeah, we ask with the inside leg. And I was like, oh, <laughs> that's very different because then how do you ask a change with the inside leg? That becomes quite difficult. So I realized with him also that that's what they were doing. So I'm gonna go just walk to canters, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put both legs on and then eventually I'm gonna stop putting the inside leg on and I'm just gonna do my outside. But for now, because I wanna, as I told you guys, not tackle everything as, at once. Do you use your voice? Gonna, huh? Do you also use your voice? Yeah, I'll click as well. I'll try and make it as, uh, as simple as possible. So I'm gonna go on the circle. And I mean, he knows all this stuff. I mean, he's, he does know some stuff. He knows half passes, he knows the laterals, but it's asked very differently. That's why I'm going over the basics again so thoroughly now. And then I'm gonna have to put both legs on, which is strange for me. Canter. Good boy. And that wasn't bad at all, no? No, not bad. And now, what I also need to focus on is with my seat, because with Emporio I ride really uphill and with him it's not the same. So I just want him to stay in front of my leg. Good boy. But again, I'm just taking every opportunity to be soft. And I know that in the canter it's going to be more difficult to play with the flexion. So I'm going to do the same thing with the flexion, but I'm going to make it small. I'm not going to ask for as much. So that's enough already to the outside. Then we're going to bring him back to the inside. Good, yeah. Good boy. And then to the outside. Yeah. And inside. We need to make this one, yes, a, a bit of a gymnast. Because right now he's more of like a football player. And he needs to be a little bit more of a gymnast. We're going to go into counter canter because I'm going to be able to use the counter canter now to my advantage. I'm going to ask him back to the... Oh! <laughs> Oh, he wanted to change. <laughs> oh, well, that's really good. No. Okay. Like that. That's a promising sign. I'm happy about that. Really? <laughs> yeah. Because that means the changes shouldn't be too difficult to teach. Yeah, good. I mean, it's already impressive you can do this. Yeah. So, and we're staying in the counter canter. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let the flexion to the inside lift the shoulder. Yeah, like that. 
and in this way he has to carry himself a little bit more I just have to keep the body straight I can add a bit of speed to make it easier for him yeah and it's difficult oh boy inside leg yeah good boy how does that look it's so comfortable it might not be fully balanced yet or strong enough but it feels really nice looks really good Good boy. Looks like you can count for dice. Nice. Let go and forward. Very good. Good boy. And trust. Easy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not the most graceful transition back. Why do you do it from walk? It was easier for him when we were there. It was more balanced. Good boy. So same thing, I'm just going to ask for that little bit of bend. Good boy. So this side is definitely the weaker side. You can see he also wants to go faster to get his balance, but we need to just connect ourselves. Yeah. But I'm impressed by his movement. Looks really good. Yeah, good boy. So here we just need to connect. Keep the hind engaged. Yeah, good boy. And this side, this side is the side also with the blocked flexion on this side. So it does also make it more difficult, I think, for the canter. So then I'm gonna go slight, very slight shoulder in feeling. Good boy. And then I can let go. Yeah. Because what I'm trying to do is just place that inside hind leg, hind leg more under him to support him, yeah. And then it should make it a little bit easier for him. Yeah. Good boy. Good boy. So you can see that like I've kind of just stopped for a second with the flexion work because I need to fix the body. And then when I feel like I've got a straight body, I can go back and play with the flexion a little bit more. So a lot that goes into your mind. Jeez. Hmm? What? It's funny, there's so much going on in your mind. I know, isn't it funny? Because when you ride, you don't really think. It's also strange for me to have to like say what I th I'm thinking and doing. Because usually it's like second nature, you just do it. Yeah, good boy. Good, yeah. You would be good, good for horse royalty fee. Ooh. Oh, wait. Ooh. I'm missing a little bit of jump on this side. So you can see that he's wanting to be a little bit more on the forehand which is fine. So we're just having to remind them, carry yourself, stay up, good. And then he's taking every opportunity to go faster, but that's okay. But this is why I wanted to show you guys also him now on the first ride, because I'm gonna be doing some monthly updates and then I wanna show you how far we are gonna start to get with him, because I think pretty quick, he's a smart horse, so I think pretty quick we're gonna start to see not only a lot of changes in the body, but also in the movement and in the training. But it takes time. But I feel like he's been ridden Ooh. quite well. Nothing crazy, no? Huh? He's been ridden quite well, I think. Like, yeah. no crazy things. Easy. Easy, boy. Good boy. Very good. And even here, he's behind the vertical. But look. Well, actually, I don't know if he is. Is he behind the vertical? He might be a little deep. But this is where we're at right now with his natural body carriage. So. It's also not fair for him to expect everything to change in one day. So bit by bit, we're gonna change that. I think he's got a really beautiful neck, like the build and the anatomy of the neck is gonna be really beautiful when we can bring it up. I think it will naturally sit really out. But for now, I'm just more worried about engaging the body and bringing it all together. Dad, he's tired, he's dripping sweat. And we did what, 20 minutes? It wasn't spooky at all. No. He was a really good boy. How did it look from the ground? Really nice. I mean, I saw it through the screen, so it's always a bit more difficult, but yeah, it was very nice. No, he's a really sweet boy. He's Excited really fun. Excited for you both. Yeah, this is kind of, this is the horse I wanted. This is kind of like that feeling that I was looking for. 
and I'm so glad to have found him and also to have taken the risk with, you know, the foot had that crack and all that kind of stuff, but sometimes it just goes to show that with a bit of love and care, you can fix everything and you can end up with a really, really special horse out of it. So crazy to think back. I always think this, to think back at the beginning of the journey and then now, from like December to now, and then th that he's here and I'm having my first ride, it's, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm gonna keep you guys updated with kind of like monthly updates into the training, into what we're doing. I wanna see you guys pr progress. I want you to be able to compare the first rides with the first month, second, third, and kind of see where we're building this horse. I get so many questions also all the time about Emporio, about like, oh, I wish we could see him like progressing. So I'm gonna try and do that also. Maybe I can do a video with Emporio kind of showing you what we're training now and what we're doing and a bit of an update on him. Um, but I hope you guys all enjoyed Etro's first ride. I'm here at home. I'm so happy with how that went. We're both dripping sweat, <laughs> um, but it was a lot of fun. So I hope you all enjoyed. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can always let me know down below. I'm super curious about kind of what you're thinking, your first thoughts on him, and I can try and address anything in the next update video. Um, but for now, that's everything. So thank you all so much for watching, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.